All right, YouTube, this is the Shark Husbandry Network's first video. I started doing uh, a lot of uh, videos on, or a lot of uh, blogging and stuff when I was learning how to do sharks. It was hard to find information. And I just, when you go to a lot of blogs and you mention sharks, the first thing people do and what size aquarium you want to put them in, they start blasting you and, and, and basically you know, demasculating you on every blog there is. So what I've designed this network to do is to help you make better decisions when you go to purchase your shark. Everybody likes sharks. You go to the beach, you see them, you see them on TV. So my job is to help you pick out the best specimen for your tank and then tell you what it's going to take for that specimen to live and, and be healthy the entire time that you own it. Behind me is the aquarium that you see here. It's a 7 foot by 7 foot by 36 inch aquarium. It's about 1,000 gallons. This aquarium here houses currently five or six different, it's actually six species right now, one of which is not mine. I'm actually, it's a short-tailed nurse shark. I'm actually uh, taking care of it for the time being. Uh, this particular video is going to be on coral cat sharks. <clears throat> coral cat sharks are one of the easiest species that you can get inside the, uh, in the pet trade. Local pet stores, local aquariums have them. They don't grow extremely fast. And they're the easiest shark that you can have to take care of, in my personal opinion. I currently have a coral cat shark in this aquarium. He's a male. He's right at 20, probably 24 inches, maybe 23 inches, give or take, almost basically full grown. And uh, I want to go over some of the requirements that it takes to house these sharks. <clears throat> they're great sharks. They usually eat pretty much immediately. I put him in this aquarium probably a, over a year ago, and he ate the night that I put him in the, in the, in the tank. Uh, to house a shark like this, you generally want most sharks to have you know, three times their, their length and one and a half times their width generally. This is not a very active species, but at night he will not stop moving. He's going to swim constantly around the tank. Uh, if you've got a, like a nice little moonlight set up on your aquarium where you can kind of see in there, you really get a lot of activity out of him during the day. He's going to want to hide. With most sharks, you don't want a lot of rock. You want mostly sand. Uh, as you can see, the tank behind me only has very little rock in it. But whatever rock you do have, he's going to make a cave out of it, and he's going to destroy anything that you've got in there. So reefs are pretty much out of the questions with just about any shark. So if you decide that you want to have corals and stuff, and I've been through this, taking from my experience, I've you know had corals all over the place and rocks stacked up the center um, overflow box in the middle, it's not going to happen. So what I would recommend is that you get uh, you know an aquarium with a shark like this, they're like contortionists. They can literally bend through anything. So a, if you decided you wanted a coral cat shark and you were going to do a, basically a species only tank, you could probably get away with a three, with a you know, a four, I'm sorry, a four foot by two foot aquarium. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna tell you that I'm crazy, but I promise you, this shark will only use a portion of it, and that'll be at night when he's swimming around. They can flip around and get through anything. So, you know, a, a full grown two foot um, coral cat shark like I've got, which is a male, a female probably get a little bit bigger, maybe you know, somewhere in the 26, 27 inch range on your best day, uh, is probably gonna be a slight, a, a tad bit girthier. Uh, this guy here is probably about as big around as I would say, um, hell, man, probably a, 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 like a baseball bat down towards the handle, twice the size of the handle of a baseball bat. He's not that big around. He can flip and get around through anything, and he's perfectly comfortable, way more than enough room in my aquarium that I've currently got right now. Uh, you want water temperature between 74 and, our, they say 72, but I'd say 74 between uh, you know, 80 degrees. That would make them perfectly comfortable. You can probably go as low as 72, 71 degrees, and up to as much as 84 degrees. I don't think they'd like the hotter, hotter temperature because as the, as the temperature level goes up, the oxygen level in your aquarium will drop. So I, I keep this guy right here. These guys in this aquarium here currently stay in between, during the wintertime, 73 to 75, during the summertime, 75 to 77 at the absolute max. Um, I would probably generate something, use a very fine grade sand inside your aquarium, uh, something that's not going to scratch the belly of the shark, not going to, he's not going to get injured. I would put some rock in there. You're not going to like it because he's going to want to hide in it, but it makes him feel more comfortable, makes him feel at home. And some of them aren't always like that. They will get out and they'll go swim around the tank regardless of who's there. Mine does it sometimes, but he likes to hide pretty much all day during the day. You really don't see him that much. Um, your uh, your, your uh, aquarium size, the height's not that big of a deal. Uh, you could probably go two feet. I would probably give any shark. I mean, if it's a 20 inch, 24 inch shark, you want at least two feet of space. I'd recommend at least 30 in the height, even though it's not a big issue with sharks. Uh, you, but you could go, as long as you're at four feet by two feet, that would be plenty enough room to house this shark. As far as filtration goes, they're very, very dirty. All sharks are. You're gonna want massive filtration. This tank behind me has uh, 2,000 gallons per hour worth of skimming power. Notice that I'm going basically, uh, you know, two gallons for every one gallon of aquarium volume. I would recommend that in any shark or stingray aquarium. The reason being is because 
especially if you're going to go with a, like a four foot by two foot aquarium, something that's fairly small, and like I said, most people won't agree with it, the water volume is going to be your biggest problem, not the space, unlike most people will tell you. The more water volume that you have, the cleaner the water is going to stay because it's a larger volume of water. It's not going to change and fluctuate in parameters as often. Uh, you're basically going to be okay to house that shark as long as you do regular water changes. Uh, I currently change 150 gallons a week out of this aquarium. I have a lot of sharks in it. Uh, and it tends to get a little messy every now and then because I did do eat a lot. There's some larger sharks than the coral cat shark in this tank. Um, a coral cat shark, if you uh, have a, you know, a two foot by four foot by three foot aquarium, I imagine that's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood around 100 and some chain, 150 gallons, 125 gallons, give or take. Uh, a tank that size, you're probably going to want about a 300 gallon skimmer. A coral view 300 skimmer, a cone skimmer is a great skimmer. Uh, Reef Octopus makes some great skimmers. And you can go that route. As long as you have whatever, however many gallons there are, you have two gallons per hour skimming power per the gallons that you have. Um, uh, we've already gone over water temperature, we're going over skimming. I also have a, uh, I built a custom sump in my aquarium that runs through enough matrix to basically filtrate a, uh, hell, a, a swimming pool or a, a 5,000 gallon pond. So I've got overkill in the matrix, it goes through a floss pad, but I truly, my tank I do that, the reason I do that is because it's way easier for me to maintain. It's such a large tank. A smaller tank, I would highly recommend um, uh, filter bags uh, hanging in the tank. If, if you can, you know, all you do is wash them out and clean them every three days or so, and that would be perfectly fine. It'd be better than what I've got. Uh, I also run a UV filter. A lot of people don't agree with them. Uh, it doesn't hurt my tank. I don't have an expansive reef system in my aquariums, but it does help to control the algae. Haven't had any uh, parasite problems with the sharks per se, so uh, I, I do think it does help in that aspect. Uh, the two skimmers that I use, and I highly recommend these skim this company, is an Aqua C, uh, Aqua C 1000s, Aqua C EV 1000s. Awesome skimmers. Easy to clean, get into, especially with the limited space that I've got under my aquarium to house everything that I've got. Uh, it seems like it's made the job a lot easier. Uh, coral cat sharks will eat just about you know anything that any standard shark diet is going to take. Um, Missouri shark vitamins are great vitamins are very expensive if you're on a budget and if you're buying a coral cat shark in that small of a tank you probably are um, I would highly recommend at least using the um, a standard liquid vitamin that you pour when you soak the food uh, my sharks eat whiting squid Patagonian scallops and shrimp uh, and I would usually I feed them twice a week uh, Coral cat sharks can eat three times a week. Some people even feed them four, but I would, I mean, mine eats twice a week and he's perfectly fine. He's grown, he puts on, he keeps his weight up. He's perfectly healthy. There's no injuries, no, you know, ill effects. Uh, as far as nitrates go, if you're expecting to keep zero nitrates, listen very closely. If you're expecting to keep zero nitrates in a shark aquarium, it will never happen. I fought that battle for 14 months. I bought every piece of equipment. I changed all the water I could possibly change. It won't happen. My nitrates with my aquarium and all the filtration that I've currently got, two reactors, two big one EC, you know, uh, Aqua C EV uh, 1000 skimmers, uh, UV filter, all the matrix, everything that I've got, it stays at about 40 to 50, sometimes drops to 30, but that's a perfectly healthy level for sharks. It is not going to affect your shark at all, not, not one bit. I know people that keep sharks and their, and their uh, uh, Nitrates are as high as 140 to 160, and they have no ill effects at all. So I wouldn't recommend that, but I can tell you the nitrates are your most important thing. Nitrites, always, we want to be at zero. There's no reason you should ever have nitrites. If your aquarium's filtered and it's processed correctly, your nitrates, nitrites should be fine. But nitrates, if you keep them to the 30 to 50 range, you're perfectly fine. You're not going to have any issues whatsoever. So um, as far as any other recommendations, as far as tank mates, if you want to put some, uh, some with them, stingrays are fine. Just about any other kind of ocean fish except for the following. I would not recommend trigger fish uh, if you are dead set on a trigger fish. And the reason why I can say this is I've had them. Niger triggers, do not, I've never had a niger trigger bother a shark. I've never had a blue jaw trigger bother a shark. Uh, pink tail triggers are also safe and crosshatch triggers are also safe. People will say against that, I've never had or ever seen any of them attack a shark. I would never, do not put puffer fish, no matter what, don't put a puffer fish in there. Uh, it will eventually pick the eyeballs out of your shark. It'll attack your shark. It's a very dangerous bite. The shark will not make it. Eventually, that puffer fish is going to do something to that shark. Uh, most eels are okay. I've got a zebra eel here now. It's very docile. And most of your eels are going to be fine with sharks. If you get a large eel and there's an issue with food, it's a, like a dragon eel, more, green moray eel, tessellata eel. They have very big teeth. They could highly injure your shark. The shark's not going to be the, the, the aggressor in almost any situation. Small fish, 
If you're going to plan on doing small fish, as long as you keep your shark fed, you should not have any issues. The only issues I've ever had is the coral cat shark that I'm speaking of with mine, picking off a couple of fish in the middle of the night that were very small uh, while they were sleeping. Other than that, they don't bother. I've never had a shark in my tank bother anything. They don't. If you keep them fed, they're not going to hurt anything that you've got in your aquarium. Um, uh, uh, lighting, uh, some kind of actinic light, low light. I've currently got my white lights on right now. You can probably see it in the background. Uh, they don't really like light that much. If you had no light at all, it wouldn't affect them probably whatsoever. I would recommend some kind of a, a nice blue light where you can see inside the tank because it's a visual thing. You want to see it. Uh, don't go with anything super bright. I currently use a low, low wattage LED system, which makes the water shimmer and it looks really good. And I have two of those on there, but you can go with T5s. Anything that you want to go with is going to be fine for sharks. I just wouldn't get anything too bright as far as the white end. But if, as far as the blue spectrum that you're looking for, you're perfectly safe with that. And put them on a timing system, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, if that's what you want. But if you want to keep the algae down, my guys get basically the blue lights kick on at like 11 o'clock in the morning and run till 7. The white lights kick on at uh, 12 o'clock and they run till about 4.30 or 5 o'clock and they shut off. That's all the light they get. Other than that, it's room lighting that's in there and everything cuts down and they seem very, very happy with that. Uh, as far as invertebrates, they're not really, coral cat sharks are not highly aggressive towards invertebrates. They will eat them, but it's not like they go hunting and scavenging for them every five seconds of the day. I mean, I, I have to stock mine regularly because I've got a couple of fish in here that just tear them to pieces. Uh, but uh, it's not the sharks that are doing it. Uh, so you should be okay with any kind of you know, hermit crabs. Anything that's really that small, the shark's not going to spend that much time. Unless it's a very small coral cat shark. It's just too much work for, they don't really, they're just not going to mess with it that often. Uh, if you have any questions, respond. I keep track of everything that happens on, uh, as far as my YouTube channel goes, the first video. Um, and uh, so you ask a question and I'll definitely answer and I'll be doing more videos in the future as far as specimens go. So any questions you have about a coral cat shark, feel free to tag it on to the bottom of the message board and I'll, be, and I'll reply back in a timely manner. Thanks for watching. This is the uh, Shark Husbandry Network.